welcome to the TMZ Swift Tea Podcast. I'm Melanie Miller. Hey guys, and I'm Christina Cavallari. So we got uh, quite a show today. Mm -hmm. So much to talk about. Uh, Jack Sweeney is back at it again. His lawyer has responded um, to Taylor Swift. Yes, we've got Travis update. He is down under. Down under on an island? Nope. Continent, country, Australia. Just as big as America. We have Taylor spotted out. She was uh, getting getting dinner at a restaurant that she Christina was. knows very much about. Yeah, I do. Thank we you. We have the inside scoop. Yes. A, a little fun fact with some really hot men. And we hear you. We do. Melanie hears you. I do. <laughs> and I have an explanation for you. Okay. Good. Okay. Let's go. Great start. Great start. Taylor Swift breaking news of the day. Of the day, exactly. Jack Sweeney is back. He's not lying down. He's not taking it. Yeah. He's coming back to fight. Yes. So the, the biggest musician in the world. James, uh, so so if you don't know, which you probably do, mm -hmm. uh, Jack Sweeney had a uh, Instagram page called Taylor Swift Jets where he tracked Taylor's jet. Um, he had the tail number, where she takes off, where she lands. Um, how many carbon emissions? Yep. Um, and that got taken down in December. We did, and he he also has celeb jets as well. So he it's has not just Taylor that he's tracking. Right. He had one dedicated to just Taylor, but he also has celeb jets, which tracks Floyd Mayweather, Blake Shelton, Elon Musk, A Rod. You name it, he tracks them. Yeah. If they got a jet, he's gonna he's gonna follow them. Um, and so the Taylor Swift jets got taken down, and every single thing that he posted about. Um, Taylor's jet also got removed, and it was the only thing getting removed. Uh, Taylor sent Jack a cease and desist letter, yes. and Jack's lawyer, James Slater, has responded. Wait, so basically, the letter that Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift said was that she's her team saying that she's feeling harassed, scared. They listed a bunch of comments that were left on various posts saying like this is creepy and things like that, but now. He's responded with his own lawyer. With his own lawyer. Yes, so he's got backup now. So James Slater uh, tells TMZ he do he doesn't see any realistic legal path for Taylor. Says if there was any movement, a lawsuit from Taylor's side, Sweeney's team responds with an anti-slap motion, a law that provides defendants a way to dismiss meritless lawsuits quickly. So they're calling it meritless. Says there's little legal substance from his point of view. And her assertion, Jack committed stalking and harassing behavior by showing Taylor Swift's flight plan to the world was totally unfounded in the eyes of the law. So, meritless. This is ridiculous. Yeah, his argument is that it's public information. It's public and that information. everyone is able to access it. But even though it's unlawful, she's she's asked him to stop. It's still, like, I guess. But she doesn't have to follow it. Like, if you were like, hey, stop. Posting me on your Instagram page. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I, w I would hope that someone would, if I asked someone to stop doing something, I would hope they'd want to stop doing it. Sure, but if it's not legally binding, you know, you don't have to. But it's definitely immoral. I, I, I guess. I, I feel like I had a thought now. I've lost it. Okay. Um, <laughs> But I feel like. Luckily, we're not recording or anything. <laughs> but I feel like a lot of people. Oh, I had such a good one. <laughs> such a good argument. This is such a bummer. Think, Melly. Think, think, think. Um, hold on. Unlawful. Hold on. Hold on. No, it's gone. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Where did you have a thought? It's unlawful. Yeah. So he's basically saying that what he's doing is fine. But I also feel like, do you think the Swifties are going to side with Taylor on this or with Jack? And we know what your opinion is because you enjoy watching her playing. I love it. I personally don't feel the need to because oh, I'll see wherever she gets to. We'll get to this later, but the Australians don't enjoy watching planes. That's the biggest joke of the century. Um, I, I just feel like it's public information. Um... But I 100% agree. It's definitely, it's, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not illegal. He's... I've, I've remembered my thought. Oh, great. Thank God. So a lot of people are saying that, like, if she w wanted to avoid getting her, her plane tracked, she could simply just charter other planes and be, hold on, 
constantly be getting on other planes, which is annoying, but it's like she's not going to be taking care of that. She's had people to take care of that. It's not going to be her own private jet, but if she wanted to avoid getting tracked, there are ways of doing that. I agree with that, but you can see how I haven't seen the inside of Taylor's plane, but I've seen the inside of like Kim's plane. They deck it out. It's their own plane. They're going to make it nice. They're going to make it like a second home because they're in it so often. If she's constantly changing planes, that's a real inconvenience to Taylor. And she can't she's just got, leave stuff on the no, plane. No, she's got things to do. She's traveling around the world. Yeah. I don't know. It's t it's tough because it's like it, it, the point of public pu uh, public information is public. And also, mm -hmm. like, it, it, it is important to be like, we should monitor how often people are using private jets because it's like, it is bad for, I don't know, not that her. <sighs> I think the private jet argument is a very small percentage of why we have climate change as well. It is? Yeah. Mm. Well, I'm trying for Jack. I'm trying for you. I know how much Taylor hates it and I totally get it, but... People are going to figure out where she is no matter what. Exactly. And like, I track planes. I track my husband's plane when he oh, you flies do. into it. Well, I want to see when he's flying in. And that's not inappropriate for you? Uh, well, I'm married to him. I've known him for half my life. I personally know him. Like, I'm not just a fan oh. of him. I'm married. Do you go through his phone too? <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> no, I do not. <laughs> Just asking. Don't go through his phone. Tracking his... Melanie, you know tracking his plane is totally different. He works in Africa. I need to make sure, like, when he's getting here. I, I didn't know this about you, that your husband is a gold miner in Africa? He's, he works in a gold mine, yeah. Oh! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, anyway, I, I feel like... The, the My final point is that Taylor flew incognito to Kansas City mm -hmm. and the next thing we know people spotted her in Kansas City there's reports coming from restaurants like at the end of the day she's the biggest superstar in the world and yeah. we're going to find out anyway we don't need to track her plane to know where she is the paps are going to tell us where she is that wasn't my point but that's your oh sorry I thought that's what you were getting at I was saying like this, oh I see what you mean there's yeah. a whole bunch of hubbub for nothing because we're going to know we're going to know anyway I see what you mean yeah. moving on okay. Taylor is in... She's in Sydney. Sydney! Wrapped up Melbourne. Three sold out nights. Over 288,000 people. And now she heads to the lesser city, Sydney. It seems like she's really getting out there and exploring the I town, know, huh? It's really upsetting Seems me. like there's a lot more to offer than there is in Melbourne. I'm going to say again, Melbourne is so special. It's such a great city. I lived there. But yes, it does seem like she's enjoying Sydney a lot more than she was out and about in Melbourne. Yeah, she wasn't out and about in Melbourne at no, all. No, there's probably was better weather. Although apparently it's thunderstorming for her first night in Sydney. Oh, that's going to be great for the Swifties. Yeah. We love a rain show. Mm. Um, which show is yours? Is it the rain show? It is. Shit, that sucks. I don't, I, it makes me so, so sad. Dude, a rain show is the best thing ever. I'm I don't think about all my friends good. going together and I'll be. Dancing in the rain was one of the highlights of my life at Boston Foxborough Stadium. And I also looked at tickets for shows in Canada and here, and they're so expensive. How much? So expensive. How much? Like two thousand. Because I want a, I want a floor seat. That's so expensive. All right. Um. So she is in Sydney. Mm hmm. She went to the zoo. Yes, yeah, she did. She went to the zoo with her dad. Her dad. Her and tour mates. Her bandmates. Her dancers. Taking photos. Yes. Hanging out. Got some helicopter footage down under. A few meter outlets were. Really watching from above. Um, so she's in Sydney. She's she staying at? Crown Sydney. What do we know about Crown Sydney? Tell it's us everything. incredible. It's new. It opened in end of 2020. Mm -hmm. It's stunning. Like it overlooks the harbour. She's in the penthouse suite. Apparently it's reportedly $40,000 a night. It has a piano. It's got bedrooms. It overlooks the harbour, the opera house, the bridge. Insane. There's a TikTok video online. Yes. You want to take a look? Um, but pool table. Show, there, there's a, 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 what's it called when the water goes over? A, an, an, an infinity, infinity pool. Infinity pool. Jacuzzi or whatever. Yes, on her balcony. On the balcony, overlooking the harbor. I would just stay there. Just stay there. I'm shocked she's going out and about. I would just stay there with Trav, oh. enjoy the time to themselves. Taylor and Trav in the hot tub at night overlooking the harbor. That's. She's a lucky, lucky lady. They're both lucky. They're, they're so that's true, but she is like. But she's got the life, and he's get kind of just experiencing it in, in waves, and she has it twenty four seven. Yeah. Um. 
Is this like a secure hotel? A secure hotel? Is it a famous hotel? Yeah, it's famous. Celebrities it's stay famous. there. Yeah, 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 for sure. It's one of the most expensive hotels. How do we know? You know how much total it is? She's gonna be there for like a week. I haven't done the math. I can do the like five hundred thousand dollars. So speaking of Travis, no, 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 oh, no, no, no. Fuck, sorry. No, jo- Joe Alwyn. Yes, and Maddie Healy. Maddie Healy have come out of the woodwork. Her exes. Her exes. Yes. So I'd like to start with Joe Alwyn. Okay. He posted on his Instagram February nineteenth this year. Mm-hmm. Um, some are suspecting about a year after the breakup. So the announcement was made on April 8th. However, that announcement said that they had been broken up for a couple of weeks-ish when that announcement was actually made. And he's not a frequent poster. Like, his last post was the 5th of September 2023. Right. So we're talking a good six months since. It's giving I want attention. It's giving uh, now that I'm irrelevant without Taylor I've got to beef with Joe. No, but I'm not. I'm just being honest. Like this is less than a beef of Joe and more like you never post. Now it's about this is probably when they were like starting to go their separate ways because he never went to see her on tour. Yeah. So it was obviously rough before that. That was March 17th. February 19th. She hadn't gone on tour yet, though. She started, but she started March 17th and he hadn't been to a single tour by April 8th. Yeah. So they obviously they probably broke up before tour. It was probably before tour. I feel like this was around the time. This has to be significant because she's so significant. They, it feels very petty right now with her and the tortured poets department and then him on that Daily Mail, Mail article. I wouldn't put it past him to be like, oh, she loves playing with dates. Her fans love playing with dates. I'm going to give him something to talk about okay. February 19th. It's also interesting that he has been spotted out and about. So he so, has those models... Yeah, Demois had talked about this, that he was out, spotted a lot, and people, like, questioned into her. Because he doesn't usually like being spotted. That was the whole thing with Taylor. He wanted to hide. He hid. Now he's being photographed, probably, which isn't a lot, but more than he's photographed in his six years with Taylor. So that's quite a bit. Um, And basically people were wondering whether or not this was a PR move or, like, what? And so I work with paparazzi um, every single day out on the streets of L.A. Um, And I do know at TMZ we're very different. So we don't get paid per shot. We're on a salary. Um, We don't like to be aggressive with celebrities. If they want to talk to us, great. If they don't, no big deal. Um, It's different for paparazzi because every shot counts. And it's important that they get the money shot because they're getting paid per shot. Okay. Um, So what Demois was saying is basically that she talked to paparazzi and they, like, go and search out and find people that are in the headlines, which is very true. And that'll get them the most money because they're the ones being spoken about. They're relevant now. Yes. Those are the photos that are going to sell. A photo of Joe Allen is going to sell right now. And so they're sitting on where, like, around – which. We do not do, but paparazzi will doorstep, which is sitting on houses, going um, to where they're going to be. Okay. They do everything they can to figure out where they can get a photo of Joe Allen. That is their job, and that is how they get paid. So I also don't think it's um, a PR strategy either. Okay. And you don't think the Instagram is just fluke? I do not think the Instagram is a fluke. Okay. Because you do? I mean... A little, I think the Instagram may be a fluke. I agree with the pap stuff. I definitely think because she's not even naming him, but the Swifties are naming him. His name is out there on the internet. He's relevant right now. So 100% paps are going to be trying to find him. But I think he also has to think about his career and he is yeah. far less relevant now. And like, I think he would have been a, a one success that whatever. Well, he's an actor. Yeah, but he wasn't a successful actor. Like, he had that one movie that, like, he was friends with that got him to the Met Gala, whatever, he met Taylor. But he wouldn't have been in that Emma... I don't think he would have been in the Emma Stone movie and that Hulu show, none of that stuff without Taylor. He was a draw for those studios because he was tied to Taylor Swift. Now he's not. Now he's not selling tickets, and most of the Swifty community doesn't like him. I actually don't know what he's up to now. Like, I can't even comment on if he's got anything coming out. I have no idea. But uh, he was at some festival with Harry Styles. Yeah, and he, or did, he, he did the variety actors on actors as well. So he's obviously doing stuff. No, the variety actors on actors was a while ago, I thought, where he yeah. dropped the tortured poets. Tortured, yeah, that tortured man. Ago. That was a while ago. Yeah, I guess. I, I couldn't tell you what he's working on or what he's doing. Yeah. 
Sorry, but, Joe. Another uh, ex. ex. Well, this is different. Joe was a long relationship. Sure. There was definitely some love there. And I think, like, obviously, I, we have no idea how they broke up. We don't know what happened. But there's obviously still. I think we have a pretty good idea. He hit her and she's pissed and she realized. What? No, she, she, he did. He hid her in the background for years. Oh, my God, Mel. I thought you said another word. Oh. oh. Hid her. Hid. H-I-D. H-I-D. Yeah. Moving on to Maddie Healy. Maddie Healy was a lot shorter. Short, summer fling relationship. Rebound. It seemed like they were together in January because she came out last year and played that show with Maddie Healy in London, played Antihero for the first time. Yes. Um, so they're... It was shocking to see them together as well. Shocking because they had kind of hung out around the 1989 era before Calvin Harris. She was spotted wearing that 1975 yes. shirt. Yeah. And also fans have discovered that certain fans bought the vinyl of 1989 Taylor's version. And in the like lyrics in the like book thingy, it said slut featuring the 1975. And they had a verse. And they had a verse yeah. and that was cut. So I think that it ended very, very badly because I remember like a lot of people were commenting saying like, no, they just decided to go their separate ways. I don't think that's the case. I don't think you cut him from that album. If it was, if it was amicable. amicable. And also he's missing out on a lot of money now. So Matt Healy went on a, a, a rant. Do not come for me. Trust me. I, you know who I'm talking to. Honestly, no, you are. I am as mental as I speak. Have the receipts. Don't fuck with me. Trust me. It's not worth your time, Mrs. When he says, I don't fuck with me. It's. So I think you're saying he thinks he's aiming it at Taylor. Is that what you're saying? Um, so we saw on Dumois that a lot of people think it's a part of his shtick that he's not aiming That's at what I was reading. in particular. Apparently he's very big on performance art. He's usually like this. He seems maybe a, like he's, you know, having then fun on stage. Then who's he talking to though? I don't know who anyone's talking to half the time. But also Dumois has come out and said that, um, that she knows someone that says it's more directed at Swifties, which. That's what I saw as well, that. He's concerned the Swifties because the wrath of the Swifties is harsh. Yeah. You know, people have felt it. Joe Coy this year, like, it's a lot. So Truthfully, maybe he's aiming it at them. But also, maybe it's not even about us or Taylor at all. It seems like it would be about Taylor. Don't come for me. You know who you are. Don't come for me. Don't fuck with me. But it could also just be, you know, maybe it's like a buddy next door that's, like, saying he can't build a fence. <laughs> So he's going on stage at his concert saying, I don't know where no. that was going. But I, I think the reality is, is that we're, we don't even like, we're happy that they broke up. Yeah. Good riddance. Goodbye, Maddie Healy. We don't care. So he's basically speaking to people that aren't listening anyway. Yeah. Speaking to people who maybe is, maybe are coming from here for him, like in his DMs, comments on his, his like, I wouldn't put it past Swifties to be like, we hate you. We still hate oh, you. Oh, I have no doubt. We hate you. No doubt whatsoever. I mean, I've forgotten about him, but. Same. It was like a month. A month. He's, we've moved on. We're in Travis land right now. Yeah. I've forgotten about everyone pre-Travis, to we, be honest. We don't care about anything except for daddy, daddy, daddy. Yeah. Trav. Moving on to Travis, <laughs> actually. Speaking of Travis, Travis updates. A Travis update. He's down under. He's landed in Sydney. Much to everyone's I just like not surprised at all. I just like to stop you right there. Okay. He before we get to the actual landing of his plane, yeah. People think Americans are crazy. There is it's a video. Working. I'd like to to show it now. I'd like you to see with your own eyes Australians in their natural habitat. We're hearing it here. Soon we'll see it with our own eyes and confirm it. But guys, just very quickly. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. In two, in one. Touchdown! Kelsey's in Australia, we think. I'm failing to see an issue here. So it's an important day. Travis Kelsey's landing in our country. So on, I think, what was it, like the Today Show of... Yeah, so like our Good Morning America. Yeah, whatever. They're, they're, <laughs> right? they're commenting 
a play-by-play watching his plane land in Australia as if we're watching Megan and Harry or Kate and, and William walk down the aisle in a wedding or or, or come out of the, the, the church after they get married. This is a play-by-play of Travis Kelsey landing in Australia to see his girlfriend play a couple of shows in Sydney. Were you not just saying that you've been watching Taylor's plane? Everyone seems to enjoy watching the planes land at wherever they're going. We, everyone was wondering whether he was going to go. Now we have proof. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying I'm crazy. But apparently <laughs> Australians are just as wacko as I am. No, it's, it's an exciting day. You heard Mel last week when she said everyone's going to be saying, you know, where were you when Taylor Swift was in Australia? It's a pop culture moment in history, this era's tour. For you guys sure. really don't get a lot of people visiting that little island. Country. Do you? <laughs> Country, do you? We do. It's just not as often as here. We don't Can have you just them. admit the out I, I love it but it's outlandish no, I, were, I think it's great <laughs> they landed he landed in australia yes he and did. this was my favorite part when the door opened two men got out of the plane look looking very similar very similar we have one man in green with a black hat mm-hmm. and then we have another man in a white tracksuit bluish tracksuit with a white hat backwards yes and everyone in Australia was like, oh, here he is. And the first one comes out. And then the second one comes out. And they're like, oh, no, 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 this yeah, is him. This is him. Know. And they nobody could know. figure out which one was him. So Travis Kelsey was one of them. Ross Travis was the other one. Yes. A footballer, um, one of Travis's very good friends who was formerly on the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, you've seen the video. You've seen the photos. I know which one is actually Travis Kelsey. Do you know which one is Travis Kelsey? And I, I was sure which one it was, and I was confirmed correct. Oh, shit. Hang on. I need it in front of me. Okay. Which one is Travis? Which one is Ross Travis? The first one is Travis. The first one is Travis. Is that right? That's right. Oh, my God. Why did you think the first one was Travis? Show me again. Okay. You just want to look at him, huh? I actually don't know why I think that. Uh, I just think his beard, maybe he's got more. The other of, one has a beard though too. Yeah, I know, but there's more of a f- more face, like more face showing for okay. Travis. Okay. I think Travis's beard is more like okay centered. I think he just like has like a better swagger. He's like the cool. Oh, the way he's walking. Yeah, like you just see him coming from a mile away, and I knew that was him. I knew. I've never actually seen who the other one is. I haven't Travis. either. Yeah. But I thought so at first, and I was like, maybe. And then I looked again, and I was like, no, 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 the first one is. And the first one was Travis. But it's exciting that he's there. He's joined Taylor. They are hanging out and about. They went to the zoo, the Sydney Zoo. This and is- a lot of people have come for him about going straight to the zoo and Taylor going to the zoo for a second day in a row. This is interesting because I have no issue with her going to the zoo for the second time in a row. She's obviously gone there, seeing the kangaroos and stuff, and thought, you know what? Travis hasn't been here yet. He hasn't seen kangaroos. I want to bring him here and show him all this stuff. Yeah. And he loves zoos, we found out. We found out that this man, his tweets. I can't believe it. I love what someone said. This man's got a tweet for every everything. In 20, uh, in February, February 22nd? The same, that's is that that's, the same day? That's what I was saying. That's why it's so important. This is the same day Travis and Taylor went to the zoo the 22nd of February, 2024. Six years ago, Travis tweeted, what did he say? I love the zoo. I love a good zoo. I'm freaking out. Six years ago to the day, the 22nd of February, he tweeted, you're good. Uh, you're good. So he had basically seen somebody. Someone said, just met Travis Kelsey on an airport shuttle. Super cool guy. Trying to get him to come to Omaha and see the zoo. Travis responded and said, you're good people too, man. And I can't resist a good zoo. Ha ha. That was February 22nd, 2018. That is the exact same day that him and Taylor went to the zoo. Six years later. What a power. He's the most powerful manifester. They are two of the most powerful people. There is some, like, this is unbelievable. There is some intense manifestation happening here right now. After the love story situation that happened at Vegas the year before, he's singing love story on stage. Now he's singing with Taylor. Or the number 13s for the Super Bowl. Oh, there what? is a lot of things. All this numerical stuff, there is a lot of stuff happening. This is her real invisible string. Yes. 
Okay. That is banana. I, th- I thought you saw that. I didn't see oh, that. Then that was the biggest thing. What? I'm glad I didn't see that because now I'm like, get to experience it all over again. Crazy. There was also a really um, funny meme that I actually, never mind. <laughs> I'm not going to. So share. he's back at the zoo. He's at the zoo. They're petting kangaroos. They're enjoying the Aussie wildlife. They're wrapped up in each other's arms. Walking around hand-holding. And this is the other thing I think that why they've gone to the zoo. It's very secluded. They yeah. haven't seen each other for a while. They want to just have some one-on-one ti- one T and T time. T and T time. Walking around, holding hands. I don't want the Swifties there yet. Just yet. Let them just enjoy being together. Yeah. Yeah, everyone's crapped on him going, Taylor going back to the zoo. But like... How often do we get to see kangaroos? I'd want to hang out with the kangaroos. I mean, every you day. guys never, never. You have, to, you have to go to, unless you. Is there a zoo here with kangaroos? I don't think there's kangaroos in I'd hope the not. U.S. But yeah, I hope not. Um. Anyway, I think it's so freaking cute. I'm obsessed. That is breaking freaking news. Slap that up on TMZ.com, top of the website. I'm flipping out. Do you want to talk about him being a notice at Nobu Malibu, or are we like he's in Australia now? Yeah, he's in Australia. It's weird. He was in L.A. this week, which is unfortunate. He went to Nobu Malibu. Yeah. And nobody spotted him, which is a huge place celebrities go. It's very hard not to get spotted there. Yeah. I also, maybe he was going there with the hopes of being spotted to deter people from thinking that he, he was, was going, going to Australia. To Australia. And the, the whole, the whole like, how he was on the golf course. Yeah. I mean, the plans have fallen through because people no spotted him, him there. Yeah. People spotted him at a golf course, course in Las Vegas. Yeah. Interesting. I love we it. We were still questioning whether he was going. I love that maybe he's like planning Easter eggs and we just get to be like, is he going to Sydney or is he not? And now he's like, I'm in Las Vegas. I honestly, I'm in LA. I honestly think about them like at home scrolling through everyone's shit being like, these guys. Are please, nuts. please keep doing it. Please. We love it. We love following the trail. Please. Um, okay. okay. Uh, on to our spotted. Yes, spotted. Taylor Swift and Sabrina Carpenter out and about enjoying Sydney. They went out to a restaurant in Surrey Hills. Called Pellegrino's 2000, an Italian restaurant. There's actually a mural, a, a mural up of Taylor around the area. Oh, I wonder if she saw it as she was driving through. I love you. This is your ho- hometown ish. Um, explain the restaurant, explain what we know about intern Pete. Give us the goods. So, Pellegrino's 2000 is a very popular restaurant. Very hard to get a booking, but Taylor is Taylor. Yeah. She's going to get a booking. There's actually talk now that it's going to be even more harder to get a booking there now that Taylor and Sabrina have been spotted there. Taylor. Intern Pete is a um, character producer on a radio show in Australia, Carl and Jackie O. And he's said that he's seen this, the receipt. And people are reporting that he's seen it and that the pair spent 620 Australian dollars, so 408 US dollars. Not not horrible. Not not Well, it's a a little high because um, the menu doesn't seem that expensive. Oh, really? Yeah, the pasta is like 20, 30 bucks. Like you'd have to order a lot of food. Yeah, but she's. uh, I was going to say she probably ordered a lot of beverages. She's not drinking because. Or is she just not drinking the day before stage? Like is she drinking two days before stage? I thought she stopped drinking altogether, I read. I have to fact check that. Yeah. I, but maybe, I, I think it was like a light thing that, that Swifties have grabbed onto. Like, she's not drinking during tour. But she said like, oh, I can't drink before a show. I couldn't imagine trying to do this show hungover. Yeah. But that doesn't mean she's not drinking th- three days before a show. You're not going to be hungover three days later. But I also think the receipt thing is a bit of a bit because they spoke about it on the show after and showed the receipt and apparently it was a Kmart, so like a Target receipt. So I actually think it's all a bit of a... So do we know if they paid $600 and they left a generous... People are reporting that, but we haven't seen this receipt for sure. Okay. So we aren't aware. But apparently they left, reportedly left a $300 tip for staff, which is really nice because tipping isn't mandatory in Australia. You don't get any tips at all? You can definitely leave tips and... Cosmo staff would love that, but it's not mandatory. Yeah. So it's like quite a bit of money. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, have you been to Pellegrinos? No, I haven't. Oh. I I'm, I tried to book it for when I go home. Oh. Booked out. Booked out. For four, how long? Four weeks away. I'm going home and it's booked Whoa. out. Oh. Yeah. And this was before Taylor went or after? No, it was after. Oh, that was a mistake. Yeah. All right. Did you book but it do you know what? Taylor? Yeah. I want, I want to eat the food. I want to try what the food's like. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Um, but... She was with Sabrina, and what I was thinking as they were walking out, you know, I would love to see a double date with Travis, Taylor, Barry, and Sabrina. 
Is he where's he's from England or uh, he's Irish? Oh, Irish. Yeah, that would be so cute. And the height difference oh between God. the two, because Barry's very short, Sabrina's very short. Kayla's really tall, and Travis is really tall. I need to see this happen, and I also think Travis and Barry together would be iconic. Why? I don't think Travis could understand what he's saying. Why no. is Barry Keoghan at this show? Well, he's in award season right now. He's got Saltburn. He's very big over here right now. Yeah. That's he true. hasn't got time to oh, be. Oh, you're right, though. That would be good. Okay. Yeah. All right. Fun fact of the day. Fun fact. Also in Australia. Um, fun fact. There was an AFL player. We had our discussion about AFL earlier this week. Still Australian. <laughs> so Australian football. Australian football. A Collingwood player. So that's a team like the Kansas City Chiefs, but an Australian team. Um, he was at a Taylor Swift concert in Melbourne. Now, his name is Mason Cox, and he is 2.11 meters, 6.92 feet. He's insanely tall. He's the tallest player in the league. And he's gone on another radio show, Ben Lehman Bell in Australia, and he's trying to find the girls that he was standing in front of during the whole show because he wants to give them tickets to an AFL game. We have him a little segment, a little segment from the show here. You must have felt terrible going to that gig, Mason. Oh, I felt absolutely dreadful. Like, I was excited. I was hyped. And mm. I was like, maybe we'll get an aisle seat. I can just yeah. stand in the aisle. Mm -hmm. Now, middle of the row. Oh, <laughs> no option whatsoever. And I gave him a bit of chocolate before the thing started. And I was like, this is my way of saying I'm sorry. I feel like he should have purposely bought tickets in the back. To be fair, I don't understand. Collingwood is a really big team. Surely they could have forked out some money to put him in a box. Yeah, and also, like, like if I was a girl standing behind this guy, I probably would want to take a chainsaw and just split him in half. Oh, whoa. <laughs> that image was so unnecessary. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but honestly, like, if I had to stand behind a six-foot-nine guy it would suck. and you pay that much money to go see Taylor Swift, I'd lose my mind. And they were in premium seats. They were on the floor, like, not too far from the front. No, this man doesn't need to get them football tickets. He needs them to get them tickets to Sydney. That's what I thought. I thought, why are you throwing football tickets at no. them? They should be Taylor Swift tickets. He should get them a box to Taylor yeah. or something. But also, how this man looks very attractive. Is he single? I uh, have to Google. Unsure. That would be the exception to the rule. Apparently he gave them chocolate initially. Uh, we want a little more than chocolate, baby. <laughs> I mean, chocolate's I just, great. I, I mean, just can't believe uh, he's also, he's American. I thought that was really funny. Damn. Yeah, I really hope he... Uh, I hope he finds the girls. What's his name? Mason Cox. Mason Cox? Cox blocked. You Cox blocked those girls. Did you come up with that joke? No, I read it. Oh, okay. You should you should give them tickets. You should give us tickets. Let us know. Yes. So please reach out. Please let us know if you got them tickets, not to a football game, to a, a Taylor Swift show in Sydney. That's the right thing. That's to only do. fair. Are you single? Okay. I am. We hear you. We hear you. Our favorite new segment. Our favorite new segment. We hear you. So I luckily got to interview Lana Del Rey this uh, last week. And a few of the comments are saying from Butt Cheeks Guy. <laughs> <laughs> he says, or her, um, them, they. Uh, imagine meeting Lana during a time where she is about to headline Coachella, about to release an album. And instead of asking her about her, you go and ask her about another person. No wonder she was like, girl, bye. And then a very nice person, Sid, Sid, Cindy, uh, responded, said, I get what you're saying, but Melanie isn't there as a fan. She's there to do her job. And Thanks, I would... Sydney. Thank you, Sid... Oh, si <laughs> Wait, what? Is it Sydney or Cindy? Cindy. <laughs> it's so... <laughs> Cin Cindy. Cindy. We were talking about Sydney. Uh, Cindy. Cindy. Um, that's true, because I'm there to get news, and I'm not there to ask her about her album. There's no news coming out about her album, unfortunately. <laughs> Butt cheeks, guys. <laughs> I'm there to find out about news. And you know what would be pretty big news? Is that she said Taylor was coming out for Coachella. It that would break the freaking internet. Make headlines everywhere. You're also on a Taylor Swift podcast. Yes. So, as well. Uh, it benefits me to ask a Taylor question. And yes. she was just with Taylor at the Super Bowl and on stage while Taylor collected her album of the year. 100%. So that's and what I have to there's say. There's been about. a bit about Lana and like, yeah, on stage and stuff like that. But Lana, it would be such a great friend 
Taylor would be there the exact same way. I think if Lana was feeling a little off about things, she just wouldn't be friends with Taylor. And like, right. they're just, they're really good friends good and friends. women supporting women. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with asking that question. That's a valid question. And like a question that literally everyone is asking. 100%. And it would, bl like Coachella would go from like, eh, barely selling tickets to like, good luck getting them. The yeah. resale value would be insane. Crazy. You're welcome. Thanks, butt cheeks. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> Another comment came from Okay, so this is from Sukanya Sukanya. Yeah. Sorry, I'm probably completely incorrect. Thank you to this commenter. Seems like the hosts don't really get along. Makes it an awkward watch. <laughs> <laughs> the joke of it all is I've known her for 25 years. She's one of my best friends. She was a, she was <laughs> she was she was a bridesmaid at my wedding. <laughs> She didn't know where Jack works, but we keep that kind of private. Yeah. The, no, the reality is, is um, it was love at first sight for us. Mm -hmm. I met her recently. She came up to me. I came up to Melanie and I said, I hear you're a Swifty. I'm a Swifty too. You have to help me get a ticket here because I have to sell mine because I just got this job. And you said, quit. Quit. Go to the show. Forget this job. Yeah. Um, no, we're fun. We go to dinner. We get drinks. We love each other. We talk on the, we're on the phone. We're on the phone she, every day, I swear. All the time. So, every day. It's, I'm just, uh. We do get along. Awkward. <laughs> Oops. But I thank you for pointing out how awkward and weird I am. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll, uh. I'll uh, oh, see no my therapist again. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> Another $250. <laughs> To this commenter that I can't pronounce their name, but uh, <laughs> thank you for just reminding me hour, how I am. Hour in therapy for that one, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Why do you think I like Taylor Swift? She's weird. I'm weird. Finally, someone I can relate to. Outside is a cool shit. Anyway, let's wrap up. Let's cheers. Thanks for listening. We really appreciate it every week, Tuesdays and Fridays. Follow us on. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Watch us on YouTube. And please like and subscribe. Leave us a comment. If we agree with it, we'll be like, fair. If we disagree, we'll call you out. And uh, we enjoy your comments. I think I appreciate the person that said I was awkward. We love you. Love you. Bye-bye. Hey, wait, 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 wait. When you're not listening to Swifty on Tuesdays and Fridays, you can listen to our new TMZ podcast, Get to the Hook with Charles from TMZ and Eric. And Eric! And they're talking all things music, breaking down stats, records, anything in the music industry, all things in the music industry. Charles and Eric are the best. We love them. Every Wednesday. Did I say that? Every Wednesday. Every Wednesday. Thanks, Swifties. Bye. Bye.